All right, so here we are. I just got my blood drawn for a MRT test, which is a food sensitivity test, and a spectra cell, which is gonna basically give my nutrient analysis upon some other things. So we're gonna get a good level of markers back. An update from the protocol that I previously spoke about. So I did about two weeks of bone broth and vegetables. It started to feel a bit weak. And I did that to just give my gut a cleanse, give it a break. And I started to feel a bit weak and like I needed to add in a wider spectrum of foods. So I increased the breadth of the, the food varieties and added in some eggs and things from there, like ghee and butter and other things to kind of give me more of a wider nutrient profile. I definitely felt a benefit from that, so I, I kept up with that and I've been expanding my food palette since then. That has also come with uh, also digestive challenges of experiencing, wow, that food totally doesn't work. Like raw, I had like an apple, seriously, an apple. It caused me like tons of bloating and gas. It was just not fun at all. So basically, I still have some things to figure out, which is why the MRT and food, food sensitivity test is gonna be so important figure out what foods are my kryptonite foods, what I need to avoid for now when my gut barrier is realigning and healing itself. And that thing can change over time. So as saiga levels, zonulin, CCK, all those markers increase, the gut barrier integrity is gonna be more, uh, it's just gonna be way more strong in ability to discern the sort of like nutrient versus like invaders so the immune system's not always on right so that's an important thing to cure and heal the leaky gut to be able to come to a state of non-reactivity to like every single food um i am playing around with more high protein foods i was interested in looking at more of the carnivore diet as an elimination diet as you release the consumption of fibers you liberate your body's um need to process all these salicylates and oxalates and poisons that basically all vegetables and plants cover themselves in so they're not eaten. So that can be a huge distressor on the gut. Um, another cool thing that I've been doing is adding in, I just got the M-Wave Pro, which is a heart math um, product that basically I tested on my ear, right? I hook up this HRV, heart rate variability sensor to my ear, and it tests the variability between my heart rate. Now I'm tracking my heart math HRV through my earlobe. Check it out. So as I breathe differently, it tracks my heart rate variability to tell how my nervous system is doing. So the more I'm able to get my bell curve into the zone, that's where coherence is. So if I'm in a coherent state, I can bring my heart rate variability up. So if you're super stressed, you're gonna have a very consistent, you know, intense heart rate. But if you're more relaxed, there's gonna be more adaptability, more variability in your heart rate. So that's gonna give you a parasympathetic response. So you can know when you're in the green and how to stay out of the red, right? So I've been playing around with that. It's like testing it when I get home from work, testing it after I eat, testing it after I'm in the hot tub or in the sauna, seeing what it feels like, feeling what the HRV detects when I'm in different brain states, different thought forms. If I'm focusing on, say, work versus play versus um, daydreaming versus focus work, meditation, bringing in you know, a higher align, bringing in the lights, coming into a state of coherence, which they, what they call it. So as your heart rate variability increases, you're in a, a stronger state of coherence, which is a flow state or a focus zone. You're in the zone, basically. And so that's kind of cool. So I feel like there's a heart variability, or heart rate variability training every day Part of a meditative practice to bring me into a non-empirical data-driven way to see how my body's reacting to different thought forms, meditative patterns, how my nervous system is responding to situations throughout the day. And that's super cool. So I feel like the nutrient, the nervous system, 
they are the hierarchy of how the rest of the body works. So Dr. Kalish will test the HPA axis, basically going to control your hormones, your adrenal output, cortisol, norepinephrine, etc. And that's going to impact how the rest of your body, bodily symptoms and systems work. If I can speak correctly, I just have tons of blood pulled out of my body. Oh my god. <laughs> so we're just going to test all these symptoms based on the nutrient analysis. Now we're going to find out what's what foods are giving me a hard time and not allowing my gut to heal as quickly. I have noticed with higher protein foods that the HCL is not present enough to break it down so I do need to chill with the protein even though I really am craving that to produce neurotransmitters by breaking down those proteins into amino acids. So that's a huge part of this I feel like in balancing my neurochemistry. I have gotten the caffeine out. The caffeine is out the door, right? So that's huge and that is a big deal because I've been on that for two years and I've come off it a few times but pretty much two years every single day. Now that I'm off the caffeine I think it's really important to note that I'll be able to assimilate more nutrients. I have had better bowel movements, I've had more energy, I've been able to wake up a little bit easier. I'm still not where I want to be but things are, things are moving along and uh, I just feel like I'm not dependent, it doesn't feel good to be like dependent on something and the energy that comes from just getting my B vitamins, you know, getting my zinc, my magnesium, which basically the caffeine is dehydrating, it's, if you're doing coffee, it's going to be acidifying and then it's going to pull all of, it's going to tax your liver, right? And then it's going to pull the B vitamins, zinc, magnesium all these other precious minerals and vitamins that you're trying to build your body with just pulls it right out of your system so you're never able to build so that's kind of feel like I wear that's where I feel like I have been in a kind of state of nutrient deficit and also leading because of that deficit the, the nervous system has not had had a my brain is not working has not had its go to be able to facilitate digestion and methylation properly. So I haven't been able to have calories and caloric deficit has been a result of that. And that's a profound kind of implication of all of this. So yeah, I'd love to like build some weight, gain some weight, be able to build a little more in my body. Uh, my knee, as I mentioned, is a little bit weird. Um, every time I bend down, I feel I feel the tendons like cracking. It doesn't hurt, but it sounds really weird. Like, and I've had my back, the rib has been pulled out a few times. So I'm getting on the collagen. I'm on the collagen, colostrum, a bunch of other things to kind of like build my nerve growth factors, epithelial, parietal cells, all these things to kind of build my own immune system and my uh, calories just through getting the protein and getting sufficient nutrients in, which is difficult for me because I also become dehydrated if the stomach isn't doing its job and letting it go to the small intestine. So there's a lot involved. I don't want to go too deep, but basically that's what's going on. Just had all this blood drawn. We're going to get all these results back soon. I got the liposomals today as well. So this is huge. I'm doing the M-Wave Pro, the heart rate variability. Just got the MRT, the spectra cell testing done. I'm going to get those back in two weeks and I'm going to start the liposomals, which are B vitamins multivitamin, got vitamin C, and uh, phosphatidylcholine, all liposomal nano uh, particles that are absorbed on your tongue. So it's like basically a very highly absorbable way to get your nutrients in if you're not able to get them otherwise. So super huge, definitely taking a turn from my original trajectory and intention, maybe not intention, but like what I thought I was gonna be doing with this protocol slash cleanse. I realized the cleanse is not gonna help me at all if my adrenals and my blood sugar and my calories aren't where they want and I'm nutrient deficient. Doing a water fast, doing some sort of like, you know, cleanse is not gonna help me in the long run because I'm gonna deplete myself even more and tire out my adrenals and burn them out more. So that wasn't the route I wanted to go and the juice didn't work at all because I just still, I still feel weird from juice. It's like, why am I getting all these symptoms from eating plants, basically because the gut bacteria is messed up and motility isn't where it could be. So there's a lot involved, but it's very simple, I think, getting the nervous system back to where it wants to be. 
getting myself neutrified. I got the caffeine out. Things are moving along. The weather is beautiful here. I'm in a t-shirt. It is sunny. It's like 75 degrees out. It's beautiful. Um, got the day off. I shredded all day yesterday. I might go to the beach today. So we're here with uh, Big Brother Redwood. Woo! Love these beautiful trees. So we're on to the next thing here. I'll keep you guys updated. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, concerns, congestions, etc. Sending you so much love and blessings.